Hello and welcome to the very first round of season 3 in my F122 career mode. We're with McLaren, if you want to know how, check out the last video, we did a pre-season kind of video and then you can find out everything that's been going on over the winter. As we came into qualifying, our very very first qualifying, we had some technical issues that we had to wait for, but this McLaren is unbelievable. Compared to the Aston Martin, if this feels like an absolute rocket ship of a car that we've got our hands on this season and I know we've made a lot of people unhappy being here but it's a move I wanted and one that I debated for a very very long time after the season ended and I sat there but as we cross the line our first lap puts us P5 but as we skip on towards the end of qualifying we have dropped to P7 just ahead of Magnussen and behind Piastri in a hard sandwich but we haven't managed to improve in the first two sectors and we just about gained some time coming out of the last corner but lost it again now coming into the final corner out to the final corner and now up to the line we've dropped to P10 we haven't improved we're gonna start P10 and here is a crit for the Grand Prix off the back of a fantastic qualifying session it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. It's Carlos Sainz in pole position. And starting next to them is George Russell. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, and Hamilton, Sonoda, Oscar Piastri, Norris, and Brown, Magnussen, Albon, Mick Schumacher, and Gasly, Ocon, Latifi, Lance Stroll and Guan Yu Zhou, Perez and Robert Schwartzman. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So it's a poor qualifying by Perez, starting at the back, his teammate towards the front. We're going to be doing a one-stop, starting on the mediums, going on to the hards towards the end. Straightforward stop. And let's see what we can do in this McLaren for the very first time this season. It's 10 rounds, it's 1 of 10. And we're racing in 2024, but we've had an absolute shocker. We've spun up the rear tyres, we've been swamped. There's a Williams there, and there's an Alfa Tauri, and now we need to gain those places back. And we do, with a cheeky dive bomb back down the inside. We're side by side with Lando, couldn't get the exit. But now, we have lost out to the Haas. Yeah, I think it was already ahead of us at Magnussen. And now we're all over the back of him. And now we're going to go late to the inside into turn four. We catch, catch him napping. Now we're on the back of Lando trying to weave about, going through the S action, trying to find a way through. We don't want to be aggressive like we and wipe him out already. Like we did a couple of times last season with Lance Stroll. We like Lando, we want to keep it happy between us. So let's not go too aggressive, not in the first race. Let's be follow him now into the tricky turn 10 and onto the end towards the end of lap one here comes Lando on Oscar Piastri to the inside job done and now hopefully here we can follow him through we've run a little bit wide if we want to get this job done we're gonna have to go for a dive bomb and we're quite good at them there's now the house of Piastri lining up the move on Lando as we go deep to the inside Piastri locks up he holds around the outside, he keeps us behind, we try and do the cutback and we do do the cutback, we've gone off the track, we swap in the dummy we're on the inside and down the inside we get the job done on Oscar Piastri finally getting his chance in Formula 1 now with Haas and let's we'll see what he can do this season and now we skip on and all of those in front of us you may have seen are on the soft tyres, we're on the medium so we're just managing our pace, we were just staying in touching distance with the back of Lando but we were too quick for us to be Astri so we were just in a world of our own but I knew as long as we stayed in touch with Lando and those in front we were going to be alright as we skip on to lap 8 and it's time for those soft runners to pit not a lot really happened, Lewis pits for the hard tyres to get onto the end, so does the Albion and the Ferrari and Lando nearly beats out the Mercedes ends up going ghosting through him 
because it's Leclerc in there as well. Carlos Sainz still leading the Grand Prix. He still needs to pit though. As they come out towards the back, no one else really pitting yet. I think no one's started on the hard tyres, so there's not going to be that many cars going long, but let's see what happens later on in the race. There's now onto lap 9, Carlos Sainz pits from the lead in the Grand Prix. Can he win the first race of the season? Only time will tell as he goes on to the hard tyres now to get his one stop done and dusted and now comes out behind the Red Bull of Sergio Perez and that's the blame to the hands because he is battling Max Verstappen will Perez play the teammate card as this is George into the pits to go on to his hard tyres hard tyres seem like the option on the mediums is Piastri and he pits so this is crucial because he's behind us but we had built up a nice little gap to him but this is George Russell he's nearly made contact with the back of the Alpine because he is pulling off and out of this race is that poor reliability for Mercedes round one that's not what they need George Russell won this race last season Max Verstappen pits though and now he comes out behind Carlos Sainz and these medium tyres felt unbelievable, they just didn't fall off the cliff. There wasn't a cliff, we had really good pace. We were keeping the gap behind a much, much worn tyres, you can see there in the bottom right. But these medium tyres felt very, very good. And I thought, let's just go for it. Let's try and get these mediums as hard and as far as we can and then go on to the softs and be an absolute bullet in the final stages of the Grand Prix so that is exactly what we did leading up to lap 20 we pit and the last couple of laps on, on those we did start to lose a quite a bit of time but the softs only did what 8-9 laps so lap 20 was the minimum we had to get to if we wanted to do this strategy Three goes Leclerc though, Alonso's there and we are going to come out though just just ahead behind rather of Lando who's been staring at the back of the other Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton for the entire race hasn't been able to get the job done on him so I'm hoping to get the job done on both of them fairly soon as we are catching Lando we're going to go for the dive bomb into the final corner we go a little bit wide and then he hit the back of Lewis Hamilton and now can we get past Hamilton a bit easier than Lando has been managing so far in this Grand Prix Lando's on the back of us, we're going to send the dive bomb down the inside of Lewis Hamilton that's how you overtake Lewis Hamilton Lando you don't have to sit there for 21 laps to do that and now can we get after Yuki Tsunoda in the Alpine, Alpine looking very strong but it is only the first round and we did catch Yuki Tsunoda down the inside into turn one good move and now can we get after his teammate Fernando Alonso there's just a handful of laps to go, six laps to go but can we keep on the pressure as rounds the final corner Carlos Sainz He's going to win the opening race of the season, just like he did in season one. He wins for Staff in second. Leclerc makes it a double Ferrari podium. We couldn't catch Alonso. The tyres fell off. And as we come into the final corner now, for P5, you can see we've got a puncture on the line. Can we make it in time? Yes, we can. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part four, mate. for another spectacular Grand Prix here in Bahrain and a real champion's drive to take the win. Talk to me, Ant. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. 
these cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit, familiar to fans across the globe, a world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. Yes, in the pantry at the final corner, my heart went through the floor when I recorded this. Like Lightning McQueen trying to get to the line as quickly as we could. That spiced it up the race a little bit at the end. It was a good race in the end, really enjoyed it. Bit of a not much action, very much slow burner. The strategy always backfired so badly. If that was a lap before, we were screwed. But well done to Carlos, though, it's great from him. Ferrari still looking the team to beat this year. Lando still couldn't overtake in Hamilton and we beat our teammate on debut at McLaren. I think that's the first time we've done that in this career mode. Ferrari lead the constructors. We are currently P4. There's no point telling you the drivers. It's just the result of the race. This is looking like a really good season. Only 10 races as well. So if there is an interesting championship battle, neither a driver or even as multiple drivers can't afford to mess up. So we go to China next for the very first time since 2019 when it hosted the 1000 Formula one race can we go into that one on this trend can we keep going but we shall have to see is this car track pacific or is it generally a competitive car we will have to find out in the next episode when we head to china thanks for watching this and i'll see you in the next one goodbye